Welcome back to the October 23rd AV Trip Podcast. This will be the second episode of our two-part podcast series. If you haven't seen the first episode, check it out in the link below. We hope you enjoy. Anyway, afterward, after uh, Half Price Books, where did we go? Afterwards, we went to the SAC, San Antonio College. And who would have thought that this super small college literally had exactly the thing that I needed? The small college, not UTSA, not the big, fancy, really pretty college, the San Antonio College had its own radio station and... Uh, television room. Yeah, it had its own television room, it had, it had its own radio station, and every worker in that building was a student. So you can study there and work there, and you can graduate with years of experience because that's what radio stations look for, you know? And they took us to a bunch of little uh, stations. They uh, took us to two TV. Oh yeah, the two TV rooms, like the main one. Yeah, they took us to the big main one. And the secondary. Yeah, and they, ha- they even had a class there that was going on. And uh, they were explaining us how they teach you, they teach, uh, if you want to be like lighting, they teach you how to use the lights, how to focus the lights. Every production they do, everybody has a job. Yeah, you everybody. You have someone in front of the camera talking, you have someone on the camera, you have someone controlling the lights, you have someone controlling like the, like audio, the audio, audio, like the audio, like the audio input, you have someone like controlling the microphones, like, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a sound guy, he's the microphone guy, he's, everybody had a job there. It was awesome because it's literally all hands-on experience. You study and you work there, which is the best thing that honestly there is. Well, for me, I guess. Well, for me too. Well, yeah. for pretty much everyone on the trip. Yeah, because <laughs> that's what they all wanted to do, you know, communications and everything. And like, it's I find it crazy how like the small college had literally exactly what we needed. And what was it? That's where Jay went. Yeah, that's where Jay went. Jay from, from PBS. From PBS, that graduated and then went straight to PBS. We went to all uh, other uh, radio stations and they had a guest speaker that went to a San Antonio college and not from UTSA. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of cool. And their radio program was, they have a, their own radio station, I think it was like 90.1 yeah. FM. I mean, it's San Antonio either way. Yeah, their, their radio program, students work there. They, they manage the entire station. But what I found interesting was each student needs at least one hour of work a week. Yeah. So for at least one hour a week, you are in control of the entire radio station. Yeah, you have to man the board or yeah. uh, operate a camera or something. They have a degree in music recording, you know, because they have the little studio to record music or artists or bands and everything. Yeah, was it? They said like, oh, one of the projects we give our students is that they bring in a band yeah. and and they record them and they mix the audio. We put it on a CD and we send it to the band, like one for them to have yeah. and then one for us like to grade the student yeah. on. Yeah, which is awesome because like I, like I said, they encourage you to it's have like amazing. hands-on experience and everything, everything from there, even the posters on the side where they had like, oh, the yeah. bulletin board. Their graphic design. Right. Yeah, all the yeah. posters were amazing. Like, from simple to like super abstract and everything, they were all beautifully designed. And they, well, that's the, another thing they have. They have a, a design section that everything there, like every poster done there, every single uh, newscast or radio uh, broadcast is done by students. So they have a really good uh, broadcasting section and they have a really awesome design section. So honestly, San Antonio College it's, it's the best. <laughs> it's the way to go. I don't know. The San Antonio College was the best place that we went to because it had everything that pretty much everyone needed, you know. So then after we left the sack, we went to the park and Ricky climbed the tree. We went to a parking lot. It wasn't a park, it was a parking lot. We and had a uh, time to kill before we went to the next stop. We had like a whole really? hour. Was it, was it a whole yeah, hour? Yeah, I mean, you were fast Three. asleep. <laughs> you were gone the whole time. Yeah. We, had, we had like a whole hour to kill. And I was thinking was gone. We, we found the, it was, it was at the zoo. We really? parked, we parked yeah. at oh, the yeah, zoo. Oh, I remember yeah. I saw the little, what, the little San Antonio Zoo train. Yeah, <laughs> we parked at 
in the parking lot of the zoo, on the side of parking lot. We parked in the very back, and well, uh, whoever wanted to get off and stretch and walk around, you know, you could do that. But I mean, Agustin, Agustin was, dude, like gone. Was and then when I woke up, we we're at TPR. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're outside the building of Texas Public Radio. So I, I get out, we all get out, we enter the Texas Public Radio building, and I'm still feeling groggy. I'm still like nearly stumbling, and it isn't until we meet, was it the radio host from Texas Public Radio that actually like woke me up? <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, this guy's great. It was honestly pretty cool because it was like a huge building, and they said that they were gonna get their own building because they were combined with another one. It was this giant office building. Yeah, it and was. So yeah. we had to go to like the eighth floor. Yeah, we had to go to the eighth floor of this building, and it's like, it's like, oh, it's room one thousand two hundred something. And so we go. It's basically an apartment, a pretty giant sized apartment, and like inside of that was was the Texas Texas Public Radio. He was saying he was like, hopefully by next year, two years from now, they were gonna get their own building. But it was really cool because you see, what well, we saw, like a bunch of people that have been there for years right mm -hmm. and then you see a bunch of new people that were working there and that tells you like whoa like students that just graduated can start working at texas public radio which also connects with npr oh, yeah. you know National which is yeah which is a big thing but it was awesome how they let us go to one of the little rooms one of the little oh, radio yeah. rooms their broadcasting station yeah and they it looked slick and they look so professional with their mics and all their yeah, monitors. It was, like, it it was, was their really equipment uh, yeah. overall that really, yeah. that think, really shined. I think it was like the setup because they had they had a desk where the someone would sit and listen to the entire conversation. And then they had like four mics set up, evenly spaced with like a chair right in front of them. Yeah. And each broadcasting room that they had, because they had like five, yeah. each one was exactly the same. And like they had the same layout, same mod mics, all the mics were the same. It wasn't like here in the, in our broadcasting station. We had like this this black mic, this little blue one, this little dynamic one on the side. Everything looked so neat. Everything was like it was the most professional place. And it had yeah. to probably went well, to. yeah, I it mean, had to be. It was yeah, a, it's, an actual te company. it's Texas Public Radio. Yeah. And so we were talking to this guy, and he was looking for the day schedule, and he was giving us a rundown of how Texas Public Radio works, and. And then only five minutes later, we were in that broadcasting room right next to us because our guide was about to do a live um, announcement. Was he yeah. was he was live on yeah he was he was live on air, and they had like the the timer and like the schedule, and he was always on the dot. There was no second. Super on point. Super on point. Second nature to him. Yeah, yeah, it was second nature too. Every single second that he had was used. They took us to this room where they were gonna talk to us, right? Yeah, it was gonna be like a little. I, I think this was like their conference room. Yeah, yeah, it was and, laid out. Uh huh. And they had this guy talk to us. He was telling us. Well, he was a, a young guy, right? He was he, he was young, and he they brought in this other girl, right? And she was young, and she had just started there a couple months. Yeah, and she came it? from New York. Yeah, she came yeah. from New York. And she was it. Was she. She works with WNYC. And they were telling us how they got their job there and how it works, how it is, how they get their stories, yeah, and, and how see. everything works and all the job opportunities. As we're getting the talk from these two people, um, this this guy walks in, this Latino guy walks in, his name is Dre Palacios. Yeah. He goes in there, starts talking to us out of nowhere. He was really young. He even gave us like his little business cards and everything. And he himself also graduated from the San Antonio College that we visited. Palacios yeah. introduces us like, oh, I was like, oh, who are these people? And I was like, oh, they're a class from Eagle Pass, Texas. And he's like, oh, was, and we tell him it's a border town. And it's like, and he said, that's great because we need people, we need people reporting from the border because TPR is a um, reporting station mainly. Well, they're trying to get one, uh, a station at, at a border town. Yeah. Then the process for getting a radio station is more, it's more difficult than I ever imagined, yeah. especially if you're in a border town because you're competing for bandwidth, basically. You're competing bandwidth with the radios around you in the U.S. Yeah, and, and then the radios in Mexico. He was telling us that you have to deal with the Mexican government. You have to make a deal here in the U.S. and then you have to go contact the Mexican government, see if they allow it, you know? 
So it's really hard to set up a radio station in a border town. So that's why it's really hard for like TPR to expand mm -hmm. uh, to our side. Uh, but other than that, the best thing from TPR, besides everything being so professional and, and slick and having all those young workers there, was the fact that they have paid internships. Oh, yeah. So, and Joy Palacios himself was the one that said that he was, he was going to help the interns, you know, that he helps the interns every year, every summer. So that's really cool, you know. That's awesome. After TPR. Leaving TPR? Went back to sleep. Leaving no. TPR, I was still full of sleep again. And then we went to one of the best places I've Ooh. ever eaten in my life. Freebird. Freebirds. Right. I forgot because I didn't actually eat. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he didn't eat. Freebirds Burritos. Dude. Now, I've never heard of this place. I've never heard of this place. What is it? I'd heard the name. I didn't know it was like, I didn't know it was like an actual restaurant. Okay, so there. is it a chain? Yeah, we asked Mr. Sanchez and he said it's a chain. It's all yeah. over. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's Thank just, God. It just hasn't hit here, <laughs> yeah. you know? Basically what it is, for those that don't know, it's like a Subway, but burrito style. They're, the sizes, it's like normal size, free bird size. Oh, yeah. And then their monster, monster size, which is dude, that that thing was huge, which was is it? pretty monstrous, if you ask me. It was a huge, huge burrito, and of course I got the monster. You know, dude, was it was it you, me, and Umberto got the monster. Yeah. I was thinking, I'm like, mm, I, I ate I ate a lot of Taco Cabana, but I want to eat the monster burrito. I want to see if I can finish it. And so I look back into the line, I see Umberto, and I'm like, Umberto, you're getting the monster. Because Umberto's like the six foot. Five, six foot three dude <laughs> it's like he's huge right and we both get our, our our monster burritos I'm like a quarter of the way through the burrito he's three quarters of the way done it's only been like three minutes I'm like I think he finished the burrito in like three and a half minutes or something now is there only like only halfway I'm like <laughs> it was massive and I sit down and I'm like dude where do I start with this massive burrito you unwrap it <laughs> and they taste amazing. Yeah. We leave Freebirds Free Bird. Burritos, and, and we go home. Start. We, yeah, we start heading off. Everyone fell asleep again. Me and Victor were still playing video games in the back, <laughs> and it's like, well, we get to school at like at nine. Yeah, it's and nine. I've on throughout the whole day from four p.m. I literally only slept like twenty minutes the whole trip. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think I slept. A single minute. <laughs> I, I was falling asleep. And yeah, yeah, and then Augustine's dead. <laughs> yeah. Victor's like leaning on the window. There was no dull moment in the trip, mm -hmm. you know. Like even like the nap that we took, like it was was fun because <laughs> some of us were exploring yeah. the little field <laughs> or climbing trees. But every single place there was fun. I mean, all, all in all, the trip was stellar. Overall. The trip was amazing. One of the best trips I've ever taken. We'd like to thank <laughs> UTSA, PBS, slash KLRN, San Antonio College, Texas Public Radio, and Freebird Half Price Post. <laughs> <laughs> For giving us such an amazing day, honestly. Thank you for tuning into the podcast. We'd like to thank all of you who listened to it. And moreover, We'd like to thank our CTE director, Ms. Castillon, our teacher, Mr. Sanchez, who took us personally on the AV trip alongside Mr. Gonzalez. Both are AV teachers and both teach here at Eagle Pass High School. And if you'd like to see more content, visit eaglepublicradio.weebly.com.